still have questions after yes. three years. You know what? You're going to trade Justin Fields and you get even more assets back. Yeah. would be good. And I do think Matt Eberflus is going to remain as head coach there, as he should, yeah. as we've seen great improvement by their defense. One piece of advice for Caleb Williams. I know. Look at the snow. It's great. Look at those uniforms. It's great. This is a legacy franchise who has never really truly had a standout quarterback mm. for the last 35, 40 years. You could be that guy and you could take this team back to the Super Bowl. So I would say if they draft you number one, remember, young man, it is a privilege. Oof. You know what? A couple of squads are looking for a Super Bowl title, if you will, in the new year are squaring off in just a few minutes. The Dolphins and the Ravens. Who wins this one, Phil? And the Ravens have the intensity and everything they had against San Francisco again today. I say they can. I'm taking the Baltimore Ravens. I'm taking the Baltimore Ravens as well. I'm going with the Miami Dolphins on the road in Baltimore. Two it shows up, shows out. Dolphins had intensity last week against the Cow Cowboys, just like the rotation of the National Football League. And the Colts begin the day in a three-way tie for first in the AFC South. Vegas won the toss. They elected to defer, so Gardner Minshew and the Colts will get the football to begin this one. Roof is closed on a cool December day, the final day of 2023. Daniel Carlson will kick it away, and the rookie Josh Downs is back deep to receive it for Indianapolis. We mentioned in our open, this is the sixth consecutive year these two teams have met, and the road team has won the previous five. See if that trend continues this afternoon. Carlson runs up and we're underway in Indianapolis. A short kick, downs, fair catch. So Indy will start at the 25-yard line, and for Gardner Minshew, Matt talked about it. He's got to keep it clean. 14 touchdowns on the season. The nine interceptions have been the problem. Yeah, he's got to take care of the football. I think when you look at this Indianapolis Colts team, they started fast late, uh, last week down in uh, Atlanta, but there wasn't much after that. And I think the offensive line was was the reason. I, th I don't think they played their best game last week today. I think it's important for this group up front with the uh, getting Braden Smith back, get this run game going early. They run it on first down with Jonathan Taylor and he squeezes his way up the middle to the 29-yard line. Robert Spillane on the tackle. Now, a big piece is back in the lineup for Indianapolis. That's the right tackle, Braden Smith. He did not play the last three games because of a knee injury. They are happy to have him back today. Yeah, absolutely happy to have him back. He's, he's been one of those uh, their most consistent players for the last handful of years. They're actually 6-2 and two when he plays and their record goes through the roof. And so to get him back and get some continuity on that right side next to Will Fries, I think that's important. Right back to Taylor on second down. He is met at the line of scrimmage by John Jenkins. A gain of one, that makes it third down. Raiders defense, and what a boost they've got from this man. Malcolm Coots, five sacks in the last two games. That's the most in the NFL. Over the last two weeks, Colts, they like to go no huddle. They go for it quickly here on third down. Minshew escapes the pocket, throws. He's got downs in Vegas territory. Touchdowns, still going. And out of bounds at the 20. Jack Jones knocked him out, but a 50-yard gain for the Colts. First time in two, right? right? That early game tension that you have. I love it. They get the explosive play, good movement in the pocket on the third down, but they go to the run play right behind that right side of the offensive line where Braden Smith is back. Vegas has allowed the third fewest pass plays of 20 yards or longer. But they give up one on the opening drive. Taylor with some room up the middle. Jonathan Taylor with a first down. Nate Hobbs on the tackle, first and goal for the Colts. That's already the fourth carry for Jonathan Taylor. You're going to get a heavy dose of this. It's just down here. You get a little trap from Mo Alley Cox coming around, and he just gets behind his pads, lowers his helmet. 
I mean, this is the type of running that you need from Jonathan Taylor. There, he has the game-breaking speed, obviously, the game-breaking ability. But it's sometimes when you get in the tight red zone, you just got to be powerful. Taylor on first and goal, trying the left side, and Taylor walks it in. Fifth consecutive game, Jonathan Taylor has a touchdown, and the Colts jump out to a 6-0 lead. Well, Tiki, you said it. It's just about being powerful down here when you get into that tight red zone, and they just go to the left. They're going behind Quentin Nelson. They're going up uh, behind Bernard Raymond, and, and right there, that goal... That hole is massive. Yeah. You know, you don't see stuff like that. There was no power required from Jonathan Taylor, but great execution from the guys up front. Yeah, Mo Ali Cox did a fantastic job of helping on the edge and then getting up to the second level, which made it basically touch the yeah, touch, touch the wall for Jonathan Taylor. Extra point by Matt Gay is good. Quinton Nelson was a little shaken up after that touchdown run. He hobbled back to the Indy sideline. But well, what a start for the Colts. The 50-yard pass play and the Taylor TD. Yeah, the king of sportsbooks. Please gamble responsibly. And by Chipotle. For real. The Colts have scored the eighth most points in the NFL on opening drives this year, and they add to their total the big play to Downs and then the Jonathan Taylor touchdown. Quinn Nelson was getting looked at during that timeout. We mentioned he hobbled off the field after the touchdown run by Taylor. It's a touchback here. So Aiden O'Connell and the Raiders will start at the 25. A lot was made of his performance last week. 9 of 11 in the first quarter. And then he did not complete a pass the rest of the game. Yeah, we asked him if he was aware of it. He's like, yeah, I, feel, I realize I haven't completed a pass in almost two hours. But they did enough. He also said he hates golf because it's not a team sport. All right, he loves these team sports where his team picks him up. And that's exactly what happened last week. He couldn't hang with our crew if he doesn't like golf. That's right. <laughs> On first down, O'Connell to the air. And he swings it to Devontae Adams. That's a big key. Antonio Pierce wants to get O'Connell and Adams going early. Yeah, I mean, when you have a young quarterback, a guy that, that has made a handful of starts, you've got to find ways to get him into a rhythm early in that football game. And I think that's a good way, too, right? That little swing pass to Devontae, just to get both of them a touch. Sometimes it doesn't even need to be big as a player, but just the ball in your hand, just to get a feel. No gain, but just a feel for that. I always wanted to get hit early. Yeah, I don't care if it was no a doubt. pass block or getting tackled, because it, it makes you mad. It makes you upset and really makes you start getting in the football mindset. Second down and nine. O'Connell to Samir White at the 25. Slips a couple of tackles and picks up the first down. Great job after the catch by White, who once again today is starting for the injured Josh Jacobs. Wow, that's impressive for a guy who had two torn ACLs in his life. You know, a ton of touches coming into week two weeks ago, but he's had 39 carries the last couple of weeks. Here's his first touch of the game, and he's just a playmaker. You, you, it's going to be ugly sometimes. He's going to grind it out, but every now and then you feel like he can bust one and get a big first down completion right there on second down. Here's White. And he picks up a couple, as AJ told us. It was an extensive pregame workout for Josh Jacobs, but not able to go for the third consecutive game because of a quad injury. I think the other good thing you see from the Raiders early is, is the ball's coming out of Aiden O'Connell's struggles, particularly on third down, has been hanging on to that football too long. He's got to trust people today in a playoff-type game to go make plays for him. Heavy, heavy. What you Trey Tucker in motion, play action. O'Connell, and he sails this one over the head of Samir White. That'll make it third down and long. Samson Ebukam was applying pressure in the backfield. You know, one of the things that we've seen really all season long from this Gus Bradley defense is they don't need to bring extra guys to get pressure on the quarterback. They're fifth in the league in sacks, and they run a lot of games up there, but three of those guys have eight-plus sacks, and DeForest Buckner, who doesn't have eight, has six. So they get home just by rushing four. Raiders were 3 for 12 on third down on Monday against the Chiefs. 
O'Connell taking a shot for Adams, and Devante has it. A first down completion. O'Connell to Adams. And that'll be a 24-yard gain. Yeah, excuse me, but this is a big-time throw and just wide open for Devontae Adams. You would think coming into a game, right, when you have a guy like Devontae Adams, that would be the focal point of what you do. But, Tiki, you mentioned they don't pressure a lot. They send five on that last one. It leaves space. When you blitz people, it leaves space, particularly in zone coverage. Really big-time throw there from the, from the rookie QB. What did he? What did he? O'Connell pressure's coming, and he is set. Taekwon Lewis with the sack for the Colts. This is tough for Ty, for Cole Featheringham, who hasn't played a lot this season. He's coming across to try to take on Taekwon Lewis, and it's just it's just a mismatch. Taekwon doesn't even really much pay attention to him <laughs> to get to Aiden O'Connell. That's a tough position to put your tight end in, who hasn't played a lot this season pays him no mind but they go with the, the long developing play action pass after the explosive play and it, the best thing the Colts do really on the edge is, is rush the passer they're not great in run defense but hurts him right there O'Connell to White out of the backfield and White is wrapped up EJ Speed on the tackle after a game of three and one thing we really need to get into is this Colts secondary missing two key pieces Julian Blackman put on IR earlier this week Kenny Moore popped up with a back injury at practice. He is out today. That's a huge loss. Yeah, it's a huge loss. He's really been their best player uh, in the secondary for them the entirety of the year. And when you have to replace it, you know, the production that he's had, particularly with how much they play single high safety, putting corners and, and nickels on an island, one-on-one -on -one coverage, makes it difficult on these guys. Yeah, it really does, especially you got a rookie at one of those corners. Third down and 16, Abdullah out of the backfield, room to run at the 30, and he stays on his feet to pick up the first down. Amir Abdullah in his ninth year with a 19-yard scamper. Wow, this is a great extra effort by Amir Abdullah. After he catches this ball, just watch what happens as he gets into space. And he knows he's a check down, he knows he's got room. He jumps through the tackle and finds a way with the stiff arm to take the helmet off on Nick Cross. The thing I love, too, is the identification of the open space. When you blitz, which Gus Bradley ha hasn't done a lot throughout the year, but they did more last week against Atlanta, and they've done it early in this game, you're going to have space where you can get that ball out. Good job by Aiden McCall. Off start. Offense number 72. Five-yard penalty. First half. And this is uncharacteristic of this Raiders team. They don't, they're Latin, or first, I should say, in the league in penalties. Sean Smith, our referee, the penalty was on Jermaine Illuminor. Meanwhile, on the other side of that offensive line, Thayer Munford getting another start at left tackle. Colton Miller is available today, but Munford gets the start. And he's been one of their real stalwarts in the absence of Colton Miller over the last couple of games. First and 15, O'Connell looking for the screen, connects with White. White is a 25, crunched the 23. So far as Buckner on the tackle after a gain of four. Well, we talked in the open about how this was going to be all the run game, right? But they decided to, to put the ball in the air, whether it's play action, whether it's a couple of different screens that they're getting out, but they're finding ways to just get, you know, get the ball in space, right? And it's, it's an aggressive approach, you know. Antonio Pierce comes into it saying, we're going to be aggressive, we're going to let it go. Bo Hardegree right here, kind of dialing him up, but it's been a different approach this game. It's right up the middle, right, right into that Colts defensive front. Buckner, the first to get there, now it's third down. Already on this drive, the Raiders are two for two on third down. None more important than right here, though, trying to keep pace with the Colts with the opening touchdown. You'd love to come away with seven, but I think you still have to protect the football, too, right? If it's not there, protect this thing. You've got three points in the back. Third down and nine. O'Connell fires, and it's incomplete. Intended for Jacoby Myers. And Juju Brents, the rookie, got a hand on it. Yeah, this was good coverage by the Colts secondary. There's really nowhere for Aiden O'Connell to go with this football, so he just fires it in, hoping to make a, a great catch. 
Trey Tucker, but it's just not there. Good defensive play by the rookie. So here's Daniel Carlson to attempt a field goal for Las Vegas, a 40-yard attempt for Carlson out of the hole for the punter, A.J. Cole. And kick on the way, it is good. So in at left guard. Shaken up on that last touchdown. Minshew to the air, has time, and just throws this one to the turf. Mo Ali Cox, the closest target. Well, I think Gardner Chance had a, or Gardner <laughs> Minshew had a chance. To, I'm excited, sorry. Gardner <laughs> Minshew had a chance down the field right there and was looking to throw kind of a short post uh, to Michael Pittman in the safety. Drives on it, had a chance maybe to hang in there and hit Alec Pierce flying down the center of the field. but. Those are the ones you don't want to miss kind of early in a game when you get opportunities to push the ball down the field, see if they come back to it. Minshew on the slant, and Pittman could not reel it in. A little bit high on the release for Minshew. NFL Today update in New York. It's J.B. and Phil Simms. Ravens clinched the AFC number one seed with a win. Lamar Jackson still hot. Opening drive for him, four for five, 77 yards. And a 20-yard touchdown pass to Justice Hill. That makes the score 7-7. to -7. Back to Andrew, Tiki, Matt, and AJ. All right, guys, thank you. Baltimore trying to wrap up the one seed with a win today. Meanwhile, third down and 10 for Indianapolis. Just get the snap off in time. Minshew with pressure coming. Max Crosby has him, and now he's brought down. Adam Butler finishes him off, but Crosby was in the backfield. A nine-yard loss. You know, Max Crosby usually lines up to the offensive right side, so he's on the defensive left. But he's been flipped a couple of times in this game, and you see the impact immediately. He does that because he's running a game inside. Ultimately, he is coming back from the left side. Disrupts Gardner Minshew just enough for Adam Butler to get the big sack. Be interesting to see the different types of games that they do with the offensive line because there's now a better support system, I think, for him with Malcolm Kuntz. As Andrew talked about earlier, Adam Butler with the sack. That's his fourth on the season. Rigoberto Sanchez punting to DeAndre Carter. Carter at the 33 calls for a fair catch. A 50 fewest penalties per game this year, just four and a half. Well, they only have two more for the next three quarters. Here's Samir White on first down. And he crosses the 30. Let's go back to the Colts possession, and this is what you were alluding to with Alec Pierce deep. Yeah, I mean, you're going to see right here. Trayvon Merrick is going to drive on this short post from Michael Pittman Jr. And so Alec Pierce is just screaming in this backside. And I think this is one thing. Your eyes are here. You've got to feel that as a quarterback. And there's all this space at the top of the screen. When you're in games like this, it comes down to a handful of plays, right? Four or five plays during the course of the game. You've got to make them. That's one I think the Colts would have liked to have right there. What did he? What did he have? Second down and 12, O'Connell to Devontae Adams and taken out of bounds. Going back to Pierce, that's nothing new for him. He has run 40 more go routes than any other wide receiver in football. 199 go routes, and he's only been targeted 14 times. Wow. And he might not have been more open than that one he <laughs> no, just ran right. right there. I got to tell you, though, the, the Raiders' defense has got to figure, out, figure that out. They've been aggressive twice. One, they got beat by Josh Downs earlier in that first drive. And then again, they're aggressively attacking where they think the ball was going instead of knowing where it's going. Third down and five for Las Vegas. Pressure's coming. O'Connell fires, and it's incomplete. Getting a hand on that one was Chris LeMans, who's stepping up today for the injured Kenny Moore. Yeah, Chris LeMans with the, with the good play on the third down, and Devontae Adams thinks he's got a little P.I. on there, a little bit too much contact too early. We're going to see right here. He does get a little bit in the back, but a no call there uh, from, from the referees. And stepping up, like you said, taking advantage of an opportunity to be out there in the absence of Kenny Moore. He was signed off the practice squad last week. LeMans playing.